Wonderful good day in the year 2014 and Happy New Year to all of you. Commodity TV is again on track and we start the new year with a company presentation of Sungold. Sungold's Rice Lake Mining Complex is located 250 kilometers northeast of Winnipeg in Manitoba, adjacent to the town of Bissett. The road network serving Bissett is a paved provincial highway except for the last 50 kilometers, which is an all-weather gravel road. Since 1931, the Rice Lake Mine has produced a total of 1.5 million ounces of gold. Let's talk about the existing operations. The ore is uh, currently being mined along two active underground mining trends. The Rice Lake Mine is located along the first trend within the Rice Lake Gold Belt to be put into commercial production. Historically, this trend has held many names, including the San Antonio Mine Unit and the Mine Diabase. A second mining trend known as the Shoreline Basalt Mining Unit was identified in late 2010 as part of Sungold's intensive exploration program. Sungold is a growing Canadian gold producer and produced 86,500 ounces of gold in 2012 and should achieve quite the same in 2013. The large resource base stands at 3.5 million ounces of gold. One of the main targets for 2013 is the achievement of a free cash flow. The company will report soon about this, hopefully. Some 2013 third quarter highlights. They produced 20,220 ounces of gold during the third quarter. The achieved average mill throughput was 1,906 tons per day. The mined ore at a quarterly rate was approximately 1,825 tons per day for a total of 167,937 tons. Also, they reduced the total quarterly capital investment down to $8.3 million and achieved total cash costs of $938 per ounce of gold sold and realized a cash operating margin of $435 per ounce of gold sold with an average realized price of $1,373 per ounce through the quarter. That generated positive cash flow from, operate, from operating activities before changes in non-cash working capital was at $2.2 million. The quarterly revenue stood at $28.7 million with gold sales of 20,873 ounces at a realized price of $1,373 per ounce. The quarterly operating loss from operations was $0.6 million and the quarterly total and comprehensive loss of $6.4 million was recorded. They reported cash and short-term investments balance of $20.3 million as at September 30, 2013. In addition, the company completed approximately 45,000 meters of exploration and definition diamond drilling. Well, let's talk about the operations. Sandgold operates a mining complex consisting of three mines called 007, that's not James Bond, Hinge and Rice Lake within the complex. The annual production increased since 2007 by 50% on an annual basis. Positive is the extensive infrastructure with operational flexibility among the mines. The production is stable. For 2012, they produced 86,500 ounces and they expect in 2013 a range of 75,000 to 85,000 ounces. The mine production is between 1,500 and 2,000 tons per day. The consistent cash costs help the company to survive in this low gold price environment. In 2011, they were at $848 per ounce and in 2012, we saw them at $855 an ounce. The milk capacity can go up to 2,500 tons per day, so there's enough room for capacity. Sengold had the luck that they financed in July 2010 $80 million to fund the extensive infrastructure from surface to access 007 and Hinge. In February 2013, they did again a $50 million financing, where Eric Sprott participated too, and to continue ahead of mining operations and to integrate the to integrate the A shaft with the existing infrastructure to decrease material handling costs. It looks like that the company starts to harvest now from the hard work they did in form of falling total production costs. What is now the action plan of the management? Well, they want to achieve free cash flows and improve the grade over the 5 grams gold per ton. 
the cash operating costs shall move below the $800 level per ounce and the capital spending will be lowered by 20%. In addition, they will reduce their spending for PPE by 50% and lower the underground drilling spending also by 50%. In 2013, they planned for $16 million on surface exploration. More significant curtailment will take place in future years. Furthermore, the reduced corporate and overhead spending was by $2.5 million and reduced the option agreement commitments. On the exploration side, Sandgold is very strong. The company has a 3.5 million ounce gold global resource with 655,000 ounces of gold in the measured and indicated categories. That's a strong base for short term planning and represents 18 to 24 months of mine planning. In addition, come 2.9 million ounces of gold in the inferred resource category with a high quality ounces accessible from the existing infrastructure. This represents significant long-term production horizon and gives the company, together with rising gold prices, a very good upside potential. The updated drilling results from their underground program on 26th level of the Rice Lake mine underpins the good exploration situation. The drilling results at the eastern extent of the 710 zone continue to return high-grade gold values over significant widths. This newly discovered 710 10 HW zone is located in the hanging wall of the 710 zone and is interpreted to be the down dip extension of the 007 zone. The 710 HW zone is within only 100 meters of the new 26 level development and is therefore easily accessible. Well, some recent highlights include the drill hole 614 13023, which returned 23.8 grams per ton gold over 13.9 meters, and the second drill hole was 614 13024, which returned 8.8 .8 grams gold per ton over nearly 27 meters. In addition, holds the company the Tully deposit located in Timmins North. This is a 50 50 joint venture with SGX resources. On the Tully deposit, they had some very good exploration results, like over 14 meters with over 20 grams gold per ton, or 6.3 meters with nearly 37 grams gold per ton. That's outstanding. Some company facts. The long-term debt is at $50 million, and, and Sandgold had a, had a bank treasury of $20 million per the 30th September 2013. The management is very experienced and the fantastic jurisdiction in Canada gives us a lot of security. This company would benefit a lot from turning gold prices but will still survive those markets through their cost reductions and improvements on the exploration side to bring up the processed ore grade. Make your own due diligence about this mid-sized gold producer as those share prices look like a bargain. Take care of your money. Thanks and bye-bye from Munich.